Today, you're going to walk along with me as I prepare the invoices. So today is July the 1st, and we're getting ready to bill our clients for all the services that was rendered in June. Okay, so we're going to use QuickBooks, and I'm going to share my screen so that you can follow along. Now, I'm not actually going to be in the QuickBooks for the company that I'm sending the invoices for, but I am going to show you how that would occur and then what all I do to lead up to it. So first thing is first, let me share my screen. Here's what we're going to do. If you were going in to do the invoices, you would go to sales and then you would go to invoices. And then you down here would have a list of invoices that you actually have sent in the past. So if I were to log into my actual company where these invoices are going to be sent, um, I would have a whole list of all the invoices that I have already been sent in the past. And usually what I do is because we're billing for the same type of service for that client each and every month, what I usually do is I go over and I duplicate the invoice. And when I duplicate the invoice, everything moves over that was there the prior month and all I go in is change the dates and then update membership and so we'll talk about why I update the membership so let's just create one from scratch so we go to create invoice and what you're going to do whenever you create invoice is you're just going to pick your customer so I don't have a customer so we put sample customer here and all of this information is going to pop up Make sure you have the information correct and who you're supposed to send as a copy and blind copy for email. Um, not necessarily blind copy, but certainly the copy to emails. Usually whenever we're sending out to clients, it's going to be to the uh, person who is in that department that's actually approving the work. And then we're also going to be copying in an accounts payable department. And then what you also want to do is there is a section down here where you can actually put in notes and you want to put in the note section. You're usually going to make sure that you're putting in the PO number. Um, so here you would put in note to customer. Thank you for your business. Or you could put in what the PO number is. And, uh, and so some of our clients require a PO number, so you'll have to put that in there. So QuickBooks is very easy to use. And then we just go in and you would just pick whatever services it was. And usually what we're billing for is STARS. So let's just say adherence package. And it would say something like a monthly comprehensive STARS adherence package. And we would put June 2024 um, is the dates of service. And then under quantity and rate. So if you have a certain rate tied to that particular service, you're going to set that up when you're setting up your actual product or service that will pre-populate. And then the only thing you're literally changing is going to be the quantity. And so we're going to talk about how we get the quantity. So some of our clients, we actually bill on what we call a PM PM basis. And what that stands for is per member per month. And some of the clients, we have just a straight flat fee, which means they have a bundled service. And so they're going to get the same invoice for the same amount each month. For those clients whose membership does not matter, they're billed on a flat rate. I automate those invoices inside of QuickBooks. So it sends every um, first of the month and I don't have to do anything with it. Okay. For this particular one, it's not the case that I'm got to do the actual prepared billing for today. And so we usually get our enrollment numbers, meaning what they have in their plan from CMS, which is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. We use that as our source of truth. And so I had the link to, to that particular site. And we'll go in and we'll go to monthly enrollment by plan. And then we'll download it. And it comes up. And from there, we would actually go up here and we would open the file. And when you open it, it comes up in a zip file. And so when you open it, it comes up in a zip file. And then I'm going to open up the worksheet so that you can see what it looks like. So here what we would do is this is going to be the actual spreadsheet. Now, I always keep a Word document of the plan information and it's called preparing client names invoices. And it goes step by step of how I'm actually supposed to prepare the invoices. This is crucial when you're an entrepreneur and you're of a small business because if something happens to you, somebody else in your organization needs to know how to get the money, okay? So you wanna make sure that your QuickBooks is updated with who your point of contacts is at each of these clients and that you have some type of job aid or reference document letting people know how you actually are supposed to prepare the invoices. 
And so for this one, we would actually sort for or filter for the contracts that I'm actually doing the billing for. And so because I'm not going to show you who I, my clients are and all that kind of stuff, I'm just going to let you know that that's what I would, would actually do. Okay, so let's just say we chose this plan and they have a membership of 1,259. Then we would just simply go back into the invoice and put 1,259 here. And then over here, we would put whatever the rate is. And then when you do that, it's going to populate for the amount here. And then you just add in, if you did additional services, you add them into your invoice. Now, we usually do hours per contract. So for that particular one, if this was our client, we would put this H0028. We would list out each of them separately. So this might be H0028. And then we'd put the June 2024. And the reason why you want all of this right here to stay the same is because remember, I told you if you um come back the next month and you get ready to do these, you can just duplicate it. And all you have to change now is June to July. And then once you get all of that done, we have to add in an attachment. So what the attachment is, is proof of the where we got our data from. So as a consultant, when I'm doing consulting hours, I use something called Toggle Track. And Toggle Track keeps up with all of my hours. It runs a report for me. And that report is what I would attach to QuickBooks invoicing so that my clients would have a list of everything that I've completed in order to support that particular invoice. And we'll do that in another video. And so for this one, what I would do is I would filter out by all the plans that I need, and then I would copy it into this spreadsheet. I would just create me another tab, call this the client name, whatever the client name is. And then over here, I would pull out. So let's just say it was these. I would pull these over, and then I would do a pivot table. And then in my pivot table, I'm going to have it by contract number. And I'm going to have it by enrollment. And I don't want to count. I want it as a sum. So we go to value field settings, change this to sum. And now if these were my actual clients, I would have H0028, 1259 in the invoice, H0022, 10,263 in the invoice, and so forth. And that's how it would actually populate into the invoice itself. And then once it's all good to go, you can pick um, how you get paid. This is set up for my other company, not for this one. So then there's the terms. And the terms just mean what do you have in your contract is saying when these people are actually going to pay you your money. And so net 15, which means they have 15 days to pay you. Net 30 means they have 30 days to pay you. And net 60 means they have 60 days to pay you. Uh, most of our clients do a net 30. We have one that prefers a net 60, and then we have one that's on a net 15. So the bulk and majority under net 30. Now, what I want you to realize is as an entrepreneur with employees uh, in particular, or just a high number of expenses, remember I told you that we're billing in arrears. So you've got from June and it's July 1st. And so I've already paid all the people that have worked in June, but I haven't gotten my money to cover the resources for June. However, it's now going to take me another 30 days to get payment from the June services. So you, whenever you're budgeting, you got to think about it. You're literally budgeting about 60 days of payroll before you actually get the money to pay for um, the resources and the work that has already been completed. Now, some plans may pay you prospectively, but most of the times in the industry that we're in, and it's a service-based industry, they're paying after the services have been completed and not necessarily prospectively, but you could use that as a negotiating uh, point to say, or to start there and say, I prefer to get paid prospectively. They may come back and say, no, you have to do the services and then we'll pay you retrospectively. So that's one area that you can negotiate your contract under. Uh, they may say net 60 and you want net 30. And so how do you come up with, are you okay with doing net 30? Because they may say, no, uh, we only do net 60. Just like we do have a client that does that, or they may agree to the net 30. So as you're putting these contracts and stuff together, start Start thinking about the different areas that you would actually have as a negotiation strategy. Okay, so once your invoice is all finished and complete, you can review and send um, or you can save it. And so if you do save and close, so sometimes if I have time, I'll actually come in towards the end of the month 
set all my invoices up, put it for a prospective date of the first of the month, and then I'll save and close all of it. And then on the first, I'll just go in and send it. But since today is the first, I wouldn't choose that option. I'd actually go to review and send. And then whenever I go, you go to review and send, it gives you an option to change up what you want in here. Okay, so you can add some additional email addresses if you need to. You can come down here and you can type in a message. This is the invoice for services rendered in June 2024. So you can put that in there. You can do whatever you want. And then once you hit send invoice, it'll send it off. So you see it says your invoice is ready, balance due 1259. Um, and then they would actually get this invoice um, from here. And so hopefully you found this helpful and, and to know how some of the billing strategies work when you're in a service-based industry. So remember there's PM, PM, which means that's per member per month. Uh, and that PM, PM simply means you're going to get a small fee per member that's in that plan, regardless if you do any work for that member, regardless if you touch anything with that member. Um, so it's usually a smaller fee that you're going to pay per member per month. Uh, some of them are PMPY, which just means you get another dollar amount for the member per year. And that's usually, of course, higher than the per member per uh, month. And so you also have per utilizing member per month or per year. And that just means if you have a service model where not the entire population is going to be eligible for the service you provide, you may bill a higher amount just for the people that actually utilize your services. Um, and then there's the flat fee. And so we utilize two pricing models. One is PM, PM across the entire uh, book of the client's business. And the other one is just a flat fee that is bundled. Now, if you're asking when do we use one over the other, um, you have to think about what your service package is. And sometimes your services are going to cost you a set amount of money, no matter how big that client is. You've got to have, say, two people hired. You've got to have computers. You've got to have a desk. You've got to have phones. So whatever that expense is that you have to cover, no matter what size the plan is, you have to add that in with profit and say, no matter what size the plan is, this is going to be my base charge. And that could be your flat fee. So then when you land a big fish that has a lot of members, the flat fee model may not necessarily work. So therefore, you'd want to do a PM PM fee because it's going to cost you more resources and more time uh, to be able to service that client. So then you may want to put it as a PM PM basis for it. So that's just kind of some of the ways that we think between the two pricing. So hopefully this was helpful going over how I do invoices each and every month.